Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't be there this evening, but I wanted to thank people who have been gracious to invite me there several times. The first is Rex and Carol Parker. I first spoke with Carol's group about four years ago, then with both uh, the men and women of the Determinators Investment Club about two years ago. And tonight, I'm sending in a, a 10 and a half minute video presentation. And I want the focus of the evening mainly to be around Scott Thompson and his two fine books, uh, he has the Art and Science of Value Investing and the uh, workbook that goes along with that. It is a well-organized textbook for learning the basics of value investing. So without further ado, I'm going to edit in my previous talk and then at the tail end I'll tell you just a little bit about the second edition of the Four Filters invention of Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. Enjoy and hopefully I'll be with you next year. This is a talk about stock valuation. My first book was The Four Filters Invention of Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, and in this book I talk about why this is a major advance in behavioral finance. After I had done my research by reading all of their shareholder letters going back to the Buffett partnership years, I came to realize that they were good investors to begin with, but they showed improvement as the years went along. And around the 1977 letter, there was a recurring phrase that we'll discuss here in a minute. But I came to realize that their genius in their four filters process was to capture all the important stakeholders for business success. And as I go along, you will notice that the first filter deals with products, the second one deals with enduring customers, the third one deals with managers, and the fourth one deals with Ben Graham's uh, concept of margin of safety. Now, filter number one is to understand the business and its products, or the economic understanding. So seek to understand the business and its products. Filter number two is seek sustainable competitive advantages or sometimes he calls it uh, enduring competitive advantages or uh, other times he mentions durable competitive advantages. Filter number three is to seek able and trustworthy managers. This is difficult to do but like they say uh, they may be able but if they are not trustworthy uh, you'll end up losing money. And then finally bargain price is a margin of safety. By purchasing at a bargain price or a price below the intrinsic value you get a built-in margin of safety at the time of your purchase. Now what is the evidence? Here are a couple passages that are very similar. Charlie and I look for companies that have A, a business we understand, B, favorable long-term economics, C, able and trustworthy managers, and D, a sensible price tag. Another way he has phrased it is saying it this way, when buying companies or common stocks we look for understandable first-class businesses with enduring competitive advantages accompanied by first-class managements available at a bargain price. Here is an example from Warren Buffett. It's just a question of egg, and I understand it. It makes it through that filter. B, does it have some kind of sustainable long-term competitive advantage? If it makes it through that filter, how do I feel about the management in terms of their ability and honesty? You know, that makes it through that filter, what's the price? And if it gets it through all four filters, I sign my name to the chair. The history. If we think of these four major criteria as a checklist, where did these checklist influences come from? Phil Carre and Philip Fisher had both developed and used quality checklists in their own investing behavior. You can also find a list of Charlie Munger's list of human behavioral tendencies in my Four Filters book. So it appears that back in those days, the guys were fond of making checklists. Interestingly, in the last couple of years, this has come back into fashion. Now, what about the concept of increasing one's probability and effectiveness when making investment decisions? Here is Buffett's Ted Williams analogy, and I'll just read it out loud. Uh, I put a heavy weight on certainty. Use probability in your favor and avoid risk. It's not risky to buy securities at a fraction of what they are worth. Don't gamble. You're dealing with a lot of silly people in the marketplace, and it's like a great big casino, and everyone else is boozing. Watch for unusual circumstances, and great investment opportunities come around when excellent companies are surrounded by unusual circumstances that cause their stocks to be misappraised. So the next section of the talk uh, will cover the area of what defines an excellent company for investment. Warren Buffett put the general theme this way, 
Seek whatever information will further your understanding of a company's business. In that first book, I also uh, delved into the area of framing and why these two gentlemen frame their investment decisions better than the rest of us. Uh, just a brief review, framing is a concept that was brought to light by Tversky and Kahneman in their book Prospect Theory in 1979, where they used framed questions on their subjects. They found that contrary to the prevailing expected utility theory, people place different weights on gains and losses. They found that individuals are much more distressed by prospective losses than they are, than they are happy by equivalent gains. And then further, later on in uh, 1992, Takamura showed that the effects of framing are likely to be lower when subjects are warned in advance that they will be required to justify their choices and when they are allowed more time at arriving at their choices. So in the uh, research for the Four Filters book, I noticed that Buffett and Munger framed their decision-making process better by focusing on these uh, four essential variables and then making good use of things like justification, elaboration, elimination, and time. I think by adding all these things together, one can improve the decision-making process. So to summarize, the genius of Buffett and Munger's uh, process, it captures all the important stakeholders for business success. And here are the four listed side by side. Understanding the business, well, that covers the area of uh, products. The uh, sustainable competitive advantage, that uh, covers the area of enduring customers. The uh, able and trustworthy managers covers the management portion of the business. And then finally, Ben Graham's concept of uh, margin of safety or buying below the intrinsic value. So the thing that I would like you all to get from this talk is that valuation as a whole is improved if you do a couple of areas very well. Qualitative valuation plus quantitative valuation equals uh, better valuation. So what is intrinsic value? Intrinsic value, as mentioned by Warren Buffett, he said, we define intrinsic value as the discounted value of the cash that can be taken out of a business during its remaining life. Now, anyone calculating intrinsic value necessarily comes up with a highly subjective figure that will change both as estimates of future cash flows are revised and as interest rates move. But despite its fuzziness, however, intrinsic value is all important and it is the only logical way to evaluate the relative attractiveness of investments and businesses. The model that uh, we use is, in our opinion, a decent estimation model, but it has to be applied very carefully. And basically, it is a two-stage discounted free cash flow model for the quantitative estimation of intrinsic value uh, based on the real free cash that has been earned. What we do is we take a, uh, an assumed uh, percent growth for uh, years uh, 1 to 10, and then uh, we, we flatten it out for uh, years 11 through 15 with uh, zero growth for the years 11 through 15. So there are two phases of growth in this model, and uh, starting at time zero up, up until the end of uh, year 10, and then uh, zero growth from uh, years 11 to the end of uh, year 15. After you do that, you add up all the uh, free cash flows for those 15 years, and you discount it, you discount it back to present value dollars and then you divide by the number of shares outstanding. And uh, if you have a bargain price, then you have a margin of safety. Finally, don't forget to discount the total free cash flow back to the present value using uh, a reasonable uh, discount rate. And don't forget to divide by the number of shares outstanding. Let me just say a few words about the second edition of the four filters. This book basically goes into uh, more extensive examples and uh, highlights a couple of things uh, regarding competitive advantages. One thing is to realize that many of uh, Buffett and Munger's companies at Berkshire Hathaway have a low cost of production and a low cost of distribution advantage. The other thing is they tend to buy companies that have special brand advantages. By having a special brand or something special, this helps ensure that customers will come back and customer loyalty is a big key. Also, there is the great advantage of size. They also realize that size has its advantages in terms of purchasing, as well as uh, the ability for worldwide distribution. Then finally, uh, there is the idea of uh, having an ownership culture. I believe this is a uh, competitive advantage that will continue beyond the years of Buffett and Munger. And for this to go on, Warren has designated his son Howard to be the next uh, chairman. 
he will be a non-executive chairman, but he will uh, help ensure that the ownership culture continues and that the basic uh, values of high quality bargains and rational decision making continue to be made. I now hand you off to my friend Scott Thompson. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Thank you and have a good evening. This video clip is brought to you by me, Bud Labiton, and Frips.com, focused research in profitable stocks. See me at Frips.com, F-R-I-P-S dot C-O-M.